Hi, I'm Mark Powers. Welcome to this old house. A sliding barn door is a handsome solution for rooms with a tight layout. And unlike with pocket doors, you don't have to tear open the wall. Before you order your hardware to hang the door, measure the doorway, including the casings, and order a track twice that width. Look around your neighborhood for hardwood pallets to salvage. We picked up ours at a home center and appliance store. To remove individual boards, lay the pallets on a hard surface and use a cat's paw and hammer to pry the pieces free on each side. Work carefully to avoid splitting the wood. To start building the door, use a miter saw to cut the backboards to the right height. They should be half an inch shorter than the distance from the floor to the top of the casing. Out on your work table, screw down the strapping on two sides to keep the board square. Lay the boards on the table, edge to edge. Square up the bottom edge with a scrap of wood and a hammer. Now clamp the boards together and screw down strapping on the remaining two sides to hold the board snug as you work. If any piece pops up, flatten them out with a wood scrap and hammer. Next, cut filler strips and place them around the perimeter of the door and across the center. Run a bead of panel adhesive on the filler strips, set them in place, and screw them down with short dexters. Set the bottom filler strip one inch up from the door's bottom edge to create a channel for the floor guide when you hang the door. The pallet boards go in a chevron pattern in the two frames created by the filler strips. Start by making a 45 degree miter cut at one end of each salvage board. Now, measure to find the midpoint of your door and use a framing square to draw a mark down the center line. Working with two pieces at a time, line up the mitered edges of the boards at the center line. Use a combination square and a pencil to mark where each board meets the filler strip, about an eighth inch short. Then use your miter saw to cut the chevron boards to fit. For the corners, mark each board with an X where it will intersect the two filler strips and make two cuts on the miter saw. Next, dry fit the pallet boards. If any are tricky to fit, you can shave down high spots with a block plane. Then starting at the top of the door, pick up several boards at a time, apply panel adhesive, and set the boards back in place. Use a pneumatic nail gun to tack them down so the adhesive can take hold. Hit the pallet boards with a random orbit sander to knock down any splinters. To make the cedar face frame, you'll use pocket holes. Clamp a pocket hole jig to the end of each cedar rail on its smooth face. Use the bit that came with the jig to drill two pocket holes in each end of the top and middle rails. The wider bottom rail gets three holes at each end. Dry fit the face frame over the door with pocket holes facing up. Apply wood glue to the joints, clamp the styles and rails together, and fasten the face frame with pocket screws. Carefully flip the frame over so that its rough sawn face is exposed. Run a bead of panel adhesive across the filler strips, then line up the face frame and tack it in place. To seal your door and bring out the color of the wood, we opted to finish with a simple paste wax. Use a lint-free cloth and work a liberal amount of the finish into the wood by hand, applying it in a circular motion. Next, hold up the rolling hardware on the top edge of your door, about an inch and a half in from the side. Center the mounting holes on the middle layer so the screws catch the edge of the filler strip and mark spots for pilot holes. Drill the holes and use deck screws to attach the hardware. You may need to remove the wheels to fasten it in place. Attach the second roller in the same way. With the door finished, it's time to carry it inside and install the track. Use a stud finder to locate the framing on your wall just above the door casing. We cut a 1x4 mounting board to hold the track in place and painted it to match the wall. Hold the board in place and use a combination square to transfer the location of the wall studs onto the board. Pull the board down and drill pilot holes through the board at each stud mark and fasten the board to the wall with deck screws. To mount the track, hold it against the mounting board, mark the spots for pilot holes, then drill the holes at each mark. Slip a single lag bolt through one of the pre-drilled holes in the track and slide a metal standoff over the threaded end of the bolt. Use a ratchet wrench to drive the lag bolt into the mounting board, but don't tighten it all the way. Attach the remaining lag bolt one at a time, leaving each one a little loose. When they're all installed, go back and snug up each bolt fully. After you install the first stop on the track, lift the door up onto the track, seating the wheels in place. Install the second stop using the hardware that came with your kit. Ours came with matching bolts, which we fastened by hand with a pair of wrenches. 
To keep the door on track, position the floor guide so that its top edge will sit within the channel it created on the bottom edge of the door. Drill pilot holes into the floor and screw the door guide in place. You want it to contain the door in both the open and closed positions. Use a combination square and pencil to mark the center of the right door style where you'd like your handle. Hold the handle in place and mark spots for pilot holes. Drill shallow pilot holes and fasten the handle with screws. That's it. Now just give the door a glide and admire your handiwork.